Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today uh, I just want to spend a little bit of time talking briefly about each of the Ubuntu flavors just on a single quick video. So as Ubuntu has come out, you may have seen the uh, the various Ubuntu flavors also came out. If you watch DistroWatch, you will see these. Or if you're looking to switch to Linux from Windows or Mac and you've stumbled upon Ubuntu and then found flavors and you're like, what is going on with all of these? So I just want to talk briefly about what each of these flavors are and which ones you might want to consider using. Of course, the main Ubuntu is based on the GNOME shell as the desktop environment. That's kind of the basic overarching. These various flavors that we have here at ubuntu.com forward slash download forward slash flavors, these here are various official community projects. So the, there is, are official teams that build these based on the current Ubuntu core, and they typically come out right alongside the official Ubuntu. So we're going to go ahead and have a look at these guys. So the first two we're actually going to look at are the two that are something different than just Ubuntu with a different desktop. And that is Ubuntu Kylin and Ubuntu Studio. So Kylin, this one is actually the official Ubuntu for if you are uh, Chinese government. I don't have honestly have no idea about most of the odds and ends of this other than it's an Ubuntu designed for uh, for Chinese environments. So if that happens to be you and you are looking for an Ubuntu from a Chinese perspective, Kylin is probably where you're going to want to go. Now the other one here is Studio, and this one I have used quite a bit. So Ubuntu Studio uses the XFCE desktop environment, but its entire purpose is to have an Ubuntu that is configured to have all of the different tools you need for your different types of media applications. So, and there's other ones like this. There's like AV Linux, which is based on Debian. There's, uh, I believe there's a Parrot also studio version. There's a few other things out there. What is so much nicer about Ubuntu Studio is they do tend to give more software options and the installer will allow you to pick which ones you want to use. So if you do things in, for example, graphic design, but you don't do anything at all in music, you can simply leave out all of the music stuff. And if that case, you're going to get just the basic media players, things like that, but you're not going to get any of the more advanced tools that you have. But if you do need those individual audio tools, you can go ahead and install those. So the installer allows you to pick what you would like to run on your individual systems. So if you are a person looking for all of the various tools that you would need for be it graphic design or audio or video production or desktop publishing, Ubuntu Studio is definitely a place to go. So this leaves us with the other ones and our other Ubuntu's here. These are all Ubuntu with various desktops. Although there is at times a little bit more into uh, involved in these than just adding a different desktop. So the first one of these I want to talk briefly about is Ubuntu Mate because this one here is there's so much work and development about it. Even the Mate project itself is carried forth by this team and also the team that does our uh, Linux Mint Mate group. And uh, what Mate brings to it that is really good is, as you can see here, Mate has more options for installability. So you can use, use it on a variety of different micro PCs, including ARM processors there with the Raspberry Pi. They also have a lot of different settings. So one of the things that you will find in all the Ubuntu flavors is they do tend to follow some Mac type elements or the bars or the top of the screen and things. But with Ubuntu Mate, one of the greatest implementations that they have is the ability to choose your panel layout. So they do have a more traditional Ubuntu. They have a more Cupertino. They have a more Redmond. So there's a lot of different ways to configure your platform. This also, uh, this build here does work. Uh, I forget if this is the one that does not include the data 
uh, collection that uh, Ubuntu does, or it might be Kubuntu. I forget. One of those two does, one of those two doesn't. I forget. But Ubuntu Mate really brings to it a lot of your more traditional feel of a more, you know, an older an older system with a more traditional old Windows type layout. And I've said old there a couple times. That's not to say bad. That's just to say that's what some people really want. But you do get a very nice, very beautiful, easy to use desktop. It doesn't have all of your latest things. So if you're a person that lives inside of your Google accounts or your Facebook accounts and you're looking for system integration, Ubuntu Mate will not have those functions. But it is going to have a lot of other great things as far as your layouts and stuff like this. Now, also following some more of your older trends, uh, we do have Lubuntu and we have our Zubuntu. So Zubuntu is based on XFCE and Lubuntu is based on LXQT. So LXQT, this one here is actually fairly new in how it is implemented. Um, this one used to be based on LXDE, and it was in the latest version they went to LXQT, which is definitely a better, more upgraded version. So the LXQT desktop does bring a little bit more modernity to it. It is a super lightweight desktop, even more so than XFCE. It does still have some of the, the older feel to it, which is frankly okay, uh, particularly what you are working for. But this one is definitely way better than the probably a little bit more outdated LXDE, or uh, I think it was LXDE, uh, that used to be involved. And of course, we talked briefly about Zubuntu. This is your official Ubuntu flavor that contains XFCE. And uh, we did um, we did a deep dive into the XFCE a little bit about uh, what it is, where it came from, how it's working. And so that is what you find over there. So again, just desktop environments. Now, the last two I'm going to talk about here is Kubuntu, which is based on KDE Plasma, and Ubuntu Budgie, which is the newest one of these based on the Budgie desktop. So Kubuntu is, of course, XFCE. And uh, this one here, if you're, this one here is about as close as you can get to KDE Neon without actually being KDE Neon. In fact, your difference between those two is that KDE Neon, first it's based on the, uh, the LCS package base, which is currently Ubuntu 18.04. This Kubuntu 19.10 is going to have all of the latest Ubuntu tools with the most recent, um, uh, the most recent uh, KDE release. Neon, though, is going to have a more of a rolling feel to the KDE-specific packages. So your main system packages, your main Ubuntu packages are going to be held back into the LTS, um, and the KDE packages are going to roll. So with Kubuntu, you're going to get a little bit more of a stable approach. You're not going to roll the K applications uh, and you are going to get a little bit newer applications because of the uh, 1910 base. But this guy here is, it's just a very nice, um, a very nice setup. Let's have a look, uh, drill into the features here. So here's your file manager, which is using the Dolphin file manager. Um, over here is just the simple image browser. So you can see and view the different images. Um, just different tools available. So not a whole lot there. And the last one is Ubuntu Budgie. So Budgie is, of all of the Ubuntu flavors, I think Budgie is my favorite um, desktop environment for Ubuntu. Of course, I like Cinnamon. That's the, the desktop you see me do, recording this on here is Cinnamon, which I use Linux Mint Cinnamon as uh, this is my favorite desktop environment. But Budgie is what gets us closest to this. Now, what... Uh, Kubuntu and Ubuntu Budgie are going to have is they're going to have the ability to integrate your online accounts. So if you're a person that needs those, Budgie is absolutely going to be the easiest. Uh, Kubuntu, you might need to install the, uh, the packages to do that, but they are available for the distribution. So as far as Ubuntu Budgie is concerned, let's have a look at some gallery stuff here. All right, so here's their kind of their welcome screen. You can see their layout. They have their panel at the top. 
you can see it looks very modern. We have a, a panel on the side for our application launcher. Let's see if we have a nice picture of the uh, slide out uh, bar there. That's what our menu is going to look like. I want to see if they have a picture of the notification bar. There's our wedding, our wedding weather app. Wow, wedding app, yes. You're going to get married to Ubuntu. All right. I actually want to see the, there you go. There's the notification. So this is called the Raven menu. So it's kind of like a more of a Mac-like feel. Uh, this one here is what many people refer to Budgie as Ubuntu, or as, uh, excuse me, as GNOME done right. It is pretty much the GNOME desktop with some modifications to allow you to do a little bit more features makes it a little bit easier to use as a desktop. Now what we do find is we do not have a raw vanilla GNOME that is a little bit more of a controversial thing. Uh, when Ubuntu was still based on Unity there was an Ubuntu GNOME version which had the vanilla GNOME. Some people would kind of like to see that. Maybe it's just difficult with the current setup. So that is kind of uh, a brief rundown of each of these. So let's just go through really quick. Uh, what is your computer? What is your style? What are you trying to accomplish? And which one of these might you want to use? So number one, if you are a creative person utilizing, wanting to utilize more advanced multimedia content, definitely look at Ubuntu Studio. If you are um, in the uh, Chinese region or of Chinese origin uh, and you want something that is more friendly to the uh, language pack uh, than Ubuntu Kylin. If you are looking for something that is more of a low-end hardware or you just want to make sure you are as freed up on resources as conceivably possible with a simple traditional layout, you want to go to Zubuntu or Lubuntu. Um, Mate and uh, Kubuntu are also going to be fairly lightweight, just not quite as lightweight as those other two. But with Ubuntu Mate, you are going to get, uh, if you need something, for example, on a Raspberry Pi, on an ARM processor, or if you just want to see what they're, what they're doing with the old GNOME 2 type desktop layout, uh, that's what you're going to get with Ubuntu Mate. For Kubuntu and Ubuntu Budgie, if you are needing more up-to-date, more modern features and functions, you know, Wacom tablets, uh, online accounts, things like that. Ubuntu Budgie is going to support those a little bit better. Kubuntu, I believe, will support all of those, although the settings with Kubuntu is a little bit more difficult to work through. If you do want to customize the appearance or the look of your desktop, Kubuntu is definitely for you. Way more and easier configuration options inside of that. So there is your brief rundown on all of your Ubuntu versions, and um, you, we will go ahead and uh, wrap this one up here. Let me know your thoughts and your favorite one in the comments down below.